So, what is AI pen testing and how is it different from other automated security tools like DAST? Well, guess what? In this video, we're going to discuss just that. My name is Mackenzie Jackson, and you are listening to Tool Time by Aikido Security. Pen testing or penetration testing is essentially when a white hat hacker purposely tries to exploit vulnerabilities in your application. It's something that typically needs to happen, not just for security purposes, but also for compliance, so staying compliant with certain certifications. You have to get a registered ethical hacker, a penetration tester, to run a penetration test against your site and find security issues. So AI pen testing is the AI version of that. But a lot of people can kind of get confused with this because there's something else that sounds kind of similar that's been around for a long time, and that is DAST. It stands for Dynamic Application Security Testing. And what a DAST tool does, essentially, is it kind of acts as a little bit of an automated hacker. You provide some parameters in your application, and your DAST tool will then launch a series of automated attacks against you. For example, it will test certain endpoints. It may try and deliver things like injection payloads to try and see if it can bypass authentication. And for the longest time, this is the closest thing that we have to kind of an automated or an AI version of testing. But I think what we'll find is this is going to be the sunset years for something like DAST. And there's a reason for that. Any ethical hacker will tell you that a big part of their job is creativity. They have to adapt to situations. Maybe a payload won't work, but the error message will give you a clue into something else. Also, things like DAS scans can't actually exploit business logic. This is something that a human can kind of figure out and reason with. So in that sense, DAS has always been pretty limited in its scope. It can only test what you provide it to test, and it can only do it in a very structured way. It typically will find some bugs, of course, but this will typically be the lowest hanging fruit. When you combine this with a series of other tools, like what we've talked about in this series, like SAS, like SCA, then you should get a pretty good security posture. So how is AI pen testing really different? Well, this kind of comes back to a conversation that we've had before between deterministic and non-deterministic security testing. So security has always more or less been deterministic. DAST is deterministic. It's rules, those rules pass or they fail and then it moves on. A hacker will act in a non-deterministic way because they will adapt to situations. They will find the middle ground, the gray area in business logic flaws to be able to exploit something. And AI is non-deterministic. So for most things in security, AI is actually not great, especially when it comes to scanning. That's because in security, for the most part, we actually want deterministic results. We actually want <laughs> you to look at our code and tell me if there's a security issue or not. I don't want <laughs> ChatGPT to maybe guess that there could potentially be an issue, which is kind of what it does. But in this case of AI pen testing, the non-determinism is actually a superpower. And what makes it really great is we can actually combine traditional security tools with these AI-powered security tools to create something pretty spectacular, which is an AI pen test. I always work best with visualization, so I just want, I don't want to show you an AI pen test in action. So on my screen now, what you see is a series of agents. Each agent is kind of trained in a specific way to be able to exploit something, but they can adapt. When we launch this pen test, we can actually watch what the agents are doing. They're going to be trying to log in to the website. They're going to be sending payloads to the API endpoints. They're going to be trying to investigate things. But there's a difference. Once they send out their initial payloads, they get a response back. That response, they will then use to move on to the next level, craft a new payload, try something else. And what's really cool, like in this test, you can actually see the agents thinking. They're process and how they adapt. So to kind of give an example of how this potentially could work, let's say that you're trying to bypass authentication with an SQL injection attack. You load in your payload and you get an error. When you try a different payload, you get a different error. 
What you can actually do is you can figure out the underlying query behind that by analyzing the different error messages that you get back. Then you can continually adapt your payload. This is something that an AI agent can do. This is also where business logic flaws come in. So let me explain what a business logic flaw is first. I'll explain it using a real example, which is Coinbase. Coinbase had a catastrophic business destroying vulnerability in how they checked your account balance. So Bitcoin at this moment is around about $100,000 per Bitcoin. And Ethereum is around about $4,000. So there's a massive price difference, value difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Well, how the Coinbase API actually worked was when you made a request, when it checked to see if your account had enough currency to be able to do that, it didn't actually check what coin that you had. So let's say that your account, you had two Ethereum worth $8,000. What you could do is you could craft an API request to the Coinbase API to send to Bitcoin. It would then check to see if you had enough coins. And in this case, you did, because it's not checking if you have Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's just checking if you have coins. So it would actually send $200,000 worth of value when you only had $8,000 worth of value in your account. This was a real vulnerability. Now, this is a business logic flaw. You can't really write a rule to discover this type of vulnerability because a security tool doesn't understand the inherent value difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right now, this is a little bit of a silly example, but I'm just trying to get a point across. But an AI tool can understand that. It will pull in all kinds of different context. There's another reason why an AI security pen test is really good. In a typical pen test, you will get varying levels of access to different things. So in some pen tests, you may get absolutely nothing. This is called a black box pen test. Other pen test, it's called white box pen testing, is you may get access to all of the code repositories. So this actually helps you. You can look at the code, you can try and identify vulnerabilities within that, and then you can use that to test them out on the application. Combine this with business logic and other areas, and you can kind of come up with some big vulnerabilities. The problem is that code bases are pretty big. A pen test will last for probably a week or maybe two weeks. You can't understand the entire code base of a company or even an application in that time. You may look for specific things to try and identify it. But an AI agent can understand that entire code base in just a few minutes. It will analyze it all, take all of that context from every line of code, and then it will adapt its payload based on the code and the context. It can go way deeper. If you then combine that with other tools like SAST and start feeding information to the AI agents, then you've got something pretty crazy and pretty powerful. So this is, in general, how AI pen testing works. But what about the difference in vulnerabilities that it actually finds? Well, you can think about it that the AI pen test is going to find everything that a DAST tool will be able to find. It'll be able to find if you have injection vulnerabilities. It'll be able to find things like path traversal. It'll be able to find things like if your data storage, for example, is public when it shouldn't be. But it will be a whole lot better because with all of these examples, it can adapt to what it actually understands about your application. For example, for a path traversal, it can actually understand the path that your application actually sits and lives within. But there's also a whole bunch of other vulnerabilities that desk tools would never be able to find. We've talked about business logic. This is definitely one. There's also a lot of very exotic vulnerabilities that are very difficult to write deterministic rules for. It will also be able to do things like web cache poisoning. This is something that a desk tool couldn't be able to do because it's very hard to create a rule for every parameter of this. It can also explore things like insecure deserialization. This is when you're able to manipulate serialized objects with various different payloads to try and execute malicious code. Now, all of this kind of has to be custom built. So if you had a tool that was just running through it, it wouldn't be able to do this. So in some ways, it can find everything that a DEST tool can and potentially a whole bunch better. And it can also find a whole bunch of things that have been notoriously difficult for security tools to find. There's a couple of things that I really love about the AI pen testing. So here, this is Akito's AI pen test. And what I love is that when it finishes the pen test, it generates you a report and it reads exactly how like a normal pen test report would read. It tells you how to recreate all the errors and you can kind of view that in the dashboard as well. And the one thing that I just think is so insane <laughs> is this button here that is called autofix. And yeah, that does exactly what you think it's going to do. If the pen test has access to your code repositories, it will actually figure out how to fix all the issues that it's found. And then quite often with just one click of a button, it will create a pull request to fix those issues, which is like bonkers, absolute bonkers. 
But anyway, that's essentially what AI pen testing is. It's very niche in the security world, but I think it shows more promise than anything else. There is one key factor in AI pen testing, and that is that this is a much more costly in terms of computational power to be able to launch these all the time. So therefore, you should be doing this regularly, but then adding in other security tools along the way. So you still want to have SAST in there. You still want SCA to identify dependencies because you can't run an AI pen test every single time you make a pull request. But you can do that with other security tools. So it's not going to replace everything. However, what it potentially could do is replace pen testing in general. Although I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that have opinions about this. It's definitely going to replace things like DAST. And I think it's going to complement all the other tools. Well, that's what I had for you today. I hope you found this video interesting. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.